Six days left. In the campaign, Barack Obama flexes his financial muscles tonight. He'll spend $3 million for a half hour on television. That's $100,000 per minute. It'll be a primetime advertisement to air on three major networks plus black and Hispanic cable outlets. He can do it because unlike John McCain, he didn't take public financing and therefore has tens of millions of dollars more to spend. Obama hopes to use the time to lock in his lead in the polls, which in our own four-day tracking poll has today grown to eight points. After speaking today to a crowd estimated at 20,000 in Raleigh, North Carolina, Barack Obama sat down with us for a conversation. No, I don't believe. Senator, everybody's so focused on what's going to happen November 4th. I wonder how much thought and planning you've given to what starts on November 5th. Well, my singular focus is winning this election. And so we're not taking anything for granted. I mean, this is going to be a tough race. The national polls at this point don't matter. Uh, what's happening on the ground here in North Carolina and in various battleground states, that's the key. But it would be irresponsible of me, uh, as somebody who could potentially be president, not to recognize that we're going to have huge challenges. We've got two wars. We've got the worst financial crisis since the Great Depression. So there's two scenarios. You can win, you can lose. So let's start with win. From the beginning, you said you want a new politics, want to work with Republicans. Overwhelming likelihood is, if you win, you would have a very strong majority of Democrats in both House and Senate. You've said you want to work with Republicans. Why would you need to? Well, I think, I think it's important that Democrats draw the right lesson from any victory. Uh, you know, it's easy to draw lessons from defeat because uh, that's sobering. But in some ways, I think in this election, it's going to be even more important for Democrats to come in with some modesty and humility uh, if we win. And uh, if we want to move forward in the kind of bold way that frees ourselves from dependence on foreign oil and uh, prevents our economy from being hamstrung again by high gas prices and deals with global warming, we're going to have to have everybody working together. Same is true on health care. Uh, the same is true on education. So on a whole host of these issues, I think we need Republicans, not just as showpieces. In some cases, Republicans uh, have good ideas. And uh, you know, I've always been uh, more than happy to steal good ideas from whatever the source. In recent months, you have hammered at the wealthy and CEOs and Wall Street and greed, talked about taxing the wealthy to benefit lower and middle income people. Isn't that a kind of classic old-time class warfare? No. Look, what I'm talking about here is going back to the Bush tax rates or, or, or the, uh, the tax rates that existed uh, under Bill Clinton back in the 1990s for people making more than $250,000 a year. That's not a punitive rate. So what do you mean when you told that plumber you wanted to spread the wealth? Well, if you look at the, the tape, uh, what I said was exactly what I said right now, which is that if people are uh, doing very well, then there's nothing wrong with us going back to these old tax rates in order to give tax relief to 95 percent of Americans who have been struggling, even when the economy was growing. Now, th that basic principle uh, is as American as apple pie. You know, the irony of, of one of the, the biggest promoter of uh, the early progressive income tax was John McCain's hero, Teddy Roosevelt. Uh, it, it, we have always said to ourselves that we want to make sure that the middle class is getting a fair shake, that they are able to buy a home, that they're able to buy a car. When John McCain calls you then a redistributionist, do you take that as a compliment or an insult or an accusation? Well, I, I, I gather he means it as an insult. Uh, and I think it's part of a, an old argument, an old language that doesn't apply anymore. Here's the bottom line. Uh, I want everybody to succeed. I want everybody to have the opportunity at grabbing the brass ring. And, and uh, we need to grow our economy and expand the pie. Do you have a spreadsheet of the people that you would like to bring into government? You know, I've got some pretty good ideas about uh, uh, the, the senior uh, cabinet government officials that I think uh, could perform very well for the country. So you don't have to tell us, but do you know now who you'd want as Treasury Secretary, State, Defense? Uh, I, I have a good idea of who the candidates would be. 
would it be a non or a bipartisan cabinet? Would you be? Yes. Would you want Republicans in it? Absolutely. Would you be receptive to Secretary Gates staying at defense? Uh, I'm not going to get into details, but I can guarantee you that it is important for us, particularly when it comes to national security, to return to a tradition of nonpartisan uh, national security. Uh, you know, we, we have politicized uh, our foreign policy in a way that I think it has done us great damage. And I want to return to a tradition that says, you know, uh, our differences uh, end at the water's edge. If you lose, mm -hmm. have you thought about November 5th and beyond? Absolutely. I, look, I, when I started this campaign, we were the longest of long shots. And Michelle and I were extraordinarily happy before I started running. Um, and, you know, I'm a relatively young man. Uh, you know, the, they say that there are no second acts in politics, but, you know, uh, I, I think there are enough exceptions out there uh, that I could uh, envision returning to the Senate and just doing uh, uh, some terrific work uh, with the next president and the next Congress.